You won't believe? The banks are about to crash the economy. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And our lead story today, the banks are on a path to crash the economy. And what I want you to understand is why this story is so important. Because in a debt-based economy, the expansion of debt is what causes the economy to grow. Now we can debate if the debt is used to pay off old debt, which is not useful, or if it's used for productive purposes. But the key here is what the banks are doing. Now many people believe, including the Federal Reserve, that it is the Fed that matters. The Fed drives policy. The Fed is driving the economy. But what you're about to see is it's really the banks, and we're going to look at how this report flows into the broader economy and is showing us why things are slowing down. And then, of course, we'll end with another look at the Fed and how they're completely clueless and have this all wrong. Let's head over to the Federal Reserve where we pick today's story up. We've got the January 2023 Senior Loan Officer Opinion Survey. Now, we're going to go through some of this, and I've got a ton of charts to back this up, but let's take a look at this. Is what this is is a quarterly report on bank lending practice practices that addresses the change in standards and terms and demand for bank loans to businesses and households. So this is really important. This is where we go to find out what the banks are up to. Now, again, we don't get it on a monthly basis. We get it on a quarterly. And from the Fed's perspective is, well, this is a look back, which it really is. But oftentimes, if a direction, and that's what we're looking for here, is the trend. Where is this thing headed? And what can we glean from it? Now, let's dig deeper in here. Because again, we've this is really critical. We've got loans to businesses. Survey respondents on balance reported tighter standards and weaker demand for commercial industrial loans to large middle market and small firms. Now, what does that mean, tighter standards? It means you go down to get a loan. And maybe a year ago or two years ago, it was really easy. Now they're making it more difficult. You have to meet higher requirements. You have to have more collateral. Whatever it is, it's more difficult. And if it's more difficult, that means we're going to see fewer loans originated. And of course, in a debt-based economy, that's not what we're looking to see. For loans to households, bankers reported st lending standards tightened or remained unchanged across all categories for residential real estate and tighter standards and weaker demand for home equity line of credit. Now, this is good in terms of the housing market. What I want you to understand is they will tighten standards when housing prices come down. That's what we're, we would see. But for the moment, because we're not seeing that happen in the real estate market, the banks are still willing to lend. And how about this, a special set of questions. We'll get to that in a moment. How about the major share of banks that reported tightening standards on commercial industrial loans, get this, cited a less favorable or more uncertain economic outlook, a reduced tolerance for risk, and worsening of industry-specific problems as important reasons for doing so. Now, where would they get this opinion from? How about the CEOs themselves who've come out and said, hey, we think the economy is getting worse, and we've heard them say this now for more than just one quarter and now they're starting to prepare for it they're starting to lay off and what should we expect the banks to do and say hey you know what maybe we shouldn't be lending as much money because people may not be able to pay it back if they don't have jobs Let's go on and see here. Significant share of banks also cited decreased liquidity in the secondary market. And that means simple, hey, if we're originating these loans, we'd like to dump them off onto someone else and sell them. But what they're saying is there's decreased liquidity there, decreased demand. What they're looking at is saying, look, we don't want to get stuck with these garbage loans we're originating because we already know they're garbage. So you're seeing multiple issues here on commercial industrial, but let's dig deeper into the residential side. On residential real estate lending, the standards tightened or remained unchanged across all loan types. Meanwhile, moderate net share of banks reported tightening standards for jumbo. And here's the one we should be worried about. It's not jumbo, but subprime residential mortgages, while modest net shares reported tighter standards on HELOCs. So again, there you see this HELOC issue. And why is that? Well, the banks are concerned that prices are going to come down a little bit, and that's going to buffer into people's HELOCs. They don't want to extend as much money out on that because they don't want to margin call people and say, hey, look, you're upside down and we want you to buy your loan down that we know you don't have the money to do. 
And questions on consumer lending, a significant share of banks reported tightening lending standards. Here again, restricting credit for credit card loans, while moderate net share of banks reported tighter standards for auto and other consumer loans. So you think about the auto market, prices coming down, and you start to think about, is it just a demand issue? Well, it is a demand issue, but it's also a bank issue. So you go down there and you say, look, I need to buy a car, and then you find out, you find one at the price you want, and then you go into financing and you see the interest rate and you choke and you walk out. And believe me, my friends, that is happening more than you think. So why does all this matter? Why should we even care about the banks? Well, this next chart, and then we're gonna go dig deeper into this, says it all because the banks are really behind the economy here. They control the levers. Here you can see the Senior Loan Officer Opinion Survey on Banking Practices. Here we've got for commercial industrial loans, small firms, credit card loans, construction and land, and new and used auto loans, all, all on this chart going back to 1990. And what I wanted to see here, there was a soft recession coming out of 94. You can see banks were tightening standards here. And that's any time over this line right here. You see where it says roughly two. And you see that means tightening standards on net. But look at this. You go into the dot-com bubble and look, the banks started tightening standards You know, before the bubble burst. Then you look at the great financial crisis. They were tightening standards. You see here in 2015, 2016, what did we have? Almost a global recession. The banks started tightening standards and then they eased. Of course, the pandemic. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. Why didn't the pandemic turn anything? Because of fiscal stimulus. That alleviated the problem. The banks tightened standards and said, oh, wait a minute. The government's doling out money? Of course we're going to take it. And we're going to take all of it as much as we could get. And that's why you see that sharp decline. But now what I want you to see, my friends, is look at here. You see this rapid increase in tightening of lending standards and what does that tell us banks are restricting credit and in the broad economy that leads to some bad things now of course the question we want to address is is this the happening of the fed well not really not at all here we can say the catalyst for this is the yield curve. Here we have the net percentage of commercial industrial loans. Now just going to the data we have the most information on in the St. Louis Fed database against the 10 year three month yield curve. And I've shown this yellow bar here across the or horizontal line across the bottom that shows you when the yield curve is inverted. So you can see that when the curve comes down, lending standards are tight. Here you can see this, the curve decreasing, inverting, lending standards get tight tight, 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 that's anywhere above this black line, you see lending standards are tightening. So notably, you can see again, going in the dot-com bubble, banks were restricting credit ahead of the recession. You start to ask who can cause recessions? It's the bank. Look at the great financial crisis. Lending standards started to tighten, went off the charts. And of course, what did we see? The yield curve was inverted. We see it here going into the pandemic. Of course, that actually was saved due to fiscal stimulus. And now we see it again. And of course, if you're asking why this happens, it's because banks borrow at the short end of the curve and lend at the long end of the curve. And what the yield curve is telling you is when the long end, when it's inverted, the long end is below the short end. So if you're in business, that means you're selling your goods or services at below your cost. Now you can do that for some people, but you can't do it for a lot of people. Let's look at some more charts here. What do we mean? What does this mean for interest rates? Well, everyone still believes interest rates are going higher, but when credit gets restricted, rates tend to fall. You can actually see when lending standards tighten, you see here the 10 year treasury yield tends to head lower. You see lending standards tighten, yields fall. You see lending standards tighten here, yields fall. Now, this time we're not seeing that because this is a belief that it's an inflation story. Well, will inflation hang on? Well, let's take a look. And now, when we overlay inflation against lending standards, and what should we expect to see? Lending standards tighten, and we see inflation rising and then come crashing down. And you see them rising together and then inflation crashing down. You see it rising here, 2015, 2016, we see lending standards, inflation comes down. We see it happen in the pandemic, and now we can expect it to happen again because when you think about the demand story, if people aren't out buying stuff because they either think rates are too high or they can't get credit, that means they aren't buying, they aren't spending as much, demand comes down, inflation comes with it. Again, I want you to see here this how critical the banks are because it's not a matter of the Fed. Let's look at what this means for the stock market. 
Here you can see when banks tighten lending standards, it doesn't mean the party's over for stocks, but when they start to peak out and now you see on this downtrend, it doesn't mean they're easing, it just means fewer banks are tightening lending standards. That's when you start to see they, things go off the rails for the stock market and we're not there yet. So it suggests we still could have one more rally in the markets before everybody figures out that the banks have over tightened lending standards. And now I want you to see it has virtually nothing to do with the Fed. Here you can see the Fed is raising rates and banks are on net easing standards. Here you can see the Fed pauses, the Fed still, the banks are still easing. There's really not much of a correlation. Again, here you see the Fed raising rates and lending standards are on net easing. Again, anything below the black line means on quarter on quarter, they're easing standards here. You see it again. So there's really no relationship with the Federal Reserve who thinks they're in control. Now, of course, as we know, the Fed is the big banks regulator. Do so you think they would look at the banks and say, wait a minute, we're not having an effect here because what's going to happen is the banks are going to tighten lending standards, tighten lending standards, and then they're going to break the Fed. Now, let's look at what's going on in the broad economy because we can see this flowing across. Here we see FedEx is laying off more than 10% of its officers and directors amid cooling demand. And notice here it says, the, the FedEx said it will cut $1 billion more in cost by parking planes and shutting the offices because of sagging sales and profit due to global volume declines. Doesn't end there. How about Amazon scales back cargo flying as demand cools? And what do we see here? Amazon built out its fulfillment and logistic, logistics network at a frenzied pace, but demand for e as demand for e-commerce surged. Since then, rising inflation and a slowdown in consumer spending has forced Amazon to downsize. Again, you think of this from a credit perspective and it starts to make sense. How does that then turn into global trade? Well, we got that data today. U.S. trade gap widened to a record in 2022 on import surge. Yes, imports went up, exports went down, goods and services shortfall increased 12.2%. But here, look at this chart here. We're going to take that same chart before. We see when lending standards tighten, now we have the trade deficit in red. We see the trade deficit actually goes the other direction. In an expanding economy, you want the red line to go down. And then as banks fewer banks tighten standards and credit gets a little easier to get, you see it starts to ease off here. Again, you see lending standards tighten, you see everything slowing down in trade and potentially getting worse. So we should expect to see, thanks to the banks, a slowdown and sure enough, that's validated here. We see overall trade flows have slowed recently on a shift in demand for services from goods and weaker global growth. But they say better, but better growth prospects in the US and abroad could provide support for the coming months. But what I want you to see, as long as the banks are tightening standards, the probability that this shifts is very, very low. Now, let's switch over to the Fed, who remains completely oblivious to what the banks are doing, the people they regulate. Fed's Kashkari says strong jobs data shows need for more rate hikes because, well, it's the rate hikes that is all that matters. He says, I was too surprised by the big jobs numbers. It tells me so far we're not seeing much of an imprint of our tightening to date on the labor market. Well, in fact, we could argue you're not really seeing it do anything. There's some evidence is having some effect, but it's pretty muted so far. I haven't seen anything yet to lower my rate path. We need to raise rates aggressively to put a ceiling on inflation, then let monetary policy work its way through the economy. We can always back off, so we're having to let inflation guide policy rather than our models guide policy. Well, Neil, what you should be looking at is the banks, because by tightening lender standards, they're going to already cause inflation to cool off. What I didn't show you is that it also causes a rise in unemployment at some point. So now you understand the big banks are in charge here. They're the ones driving the economy. And as long as they keep lending standards tight or even make them tighter, well, the probabilities we are going to see a recession later this year are really high. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.